Welcome back, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. My guest tonight is a correspondent for 60 Minutes and the host of Anderson Cooper 360. Please welcome back to The Late Show, our friend and yours, Mr. Anderson Cooper. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Uh, I, it's my pleasure. The last show of the year. Special, wow. special slot. I mean, last guest of 2021. Wow. I don't know what I did to deserve it. I You're a fantastic guest. You're just wonderful company to be with. Well, now you've set the bar very high. I have, yes. Yeah. Every word from your mouth is a pearl <laughs> of wisdom. <laughs> yes. You know who you are? You're an easy guest because you know how to professionally talk on camera. It's And I don't roll deep. I don't have a big entourage. Oh. You know. <laughs> Yeah. No, you don't. It's no, just no. you. Like Betty White. She's got a huge entourage. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's got her own omelet chef. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere she goes. Really? Frittatas. He does more than omelets. Really? You get the idea. Huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I actually knew a guy who was famous for being an omelet chef, and his name was Rudolf Stanish. Yeah. If, you when would I was not a kid. know anyone who was famous no, for being an omelet chef. he was famous chef. for being an omelet chef. Rudolph, Ru was it Rudolph Standish of, of the omelet family? He was an omelet. He invented the omelet. He, in fact, was so famous as an omelet chef, he had his own line of, like, omelet frying pans. I'm, well, this is the 1970s. Who would have thought you were a Vanderbilt? <laughs> <laughs> would not have guessed it. No, these were top tier. These were top tier omelet chefs. Not... <laughs> Not the guy oh, working the line at the Bennigans <laughs> on the Sunday brunch. <laughs> um, hey, listen, I've never I, had an you're over at the CNN, as I said, and I know that journalists don't like to be the story, or at least that's the you know, thing you guys say. But <laughs> CNN is the story in many ways right now, certainly over the last couple of weeks. I mean, Chris Cuomo yeah. uh, uh, was let go, uh, uh, I wouldn't say suddenly, but a little bit surprisingly. We didn't necessarily see it coming that day. Were people surprised over at the shop? I think. I don't know about surprise overall, but I mean, it happened. It didn't happen, and then it did happen very quickly. So. It didn't happen for like a year, right. and yes. then it then it was like, ah, right. oh, it might yeah. happen. And well, then look, it I, I mean, I, I think people are surprised of the day it actually happened when it happened. But um, look, I mean, no. did you know that night? Did you know? Did you know uh, before it happened? No. Before we knew? No, I had no you idea. You found out from watching the TV? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, they I, didn't, I They had... didn't have a, a staff meeting or anything and say, hey, everybody, we're going to tell everybody that Chris isn't here. I, I don't know. Maybe. No. No, of course. What, they, were, they, were, they would have a staff meeting and say, like, oh, we're going to do this thing, but don't tell anybody? I mean, uh, uh, what, <laughs> Yes, what? it's exactly really? what they would do. That... The corporation would let the employees know that you might be contacted by outside members of the press, because we're going to make some news right now by canceling our number one show. You know what? I don't think CBS does that. I, I mean, know I everyone who gets fired at CBS before the audience. Before Do you else. really? 100%. Well, they you, call that's because you're they, a muckety muck. They call me and say, is this right. okay with you? Because you're a mocker. Is this okay with you? I know people who are being fired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Oh, boy. And how did you feel about it? Do you think it was the right thing to do? Well, look, uh, I mean, look, he, uh, anytime... Look, I, I don't want anything bad to happen to somebody who's a colleague and somebody who is a friend of mine, and I feel terrible for him and for his family. That being said, um, look, journalists have strict ethics and strict rules that we are to abide by, and if you don't abide by them, there are repercussions. And I wish Chris the best, uh, and I'm sorry for how all of this played out, but, um, you know, and I, I hate this for his family, um, but this is... You know, it's a it's a it's a business with very big responsibilities and their repercussions. How's Don Lemon? Is he okay? <laughs> I think Andy because they is seem hoping. Very close. They seem very close. Don. Don yes. Don, I, yeah. You know, close. I haven't talked quite to sincerely. Don about they it. seem quite close. They I'm are curious very how close. This is, yeah, how they're very good friends. Don. They're and good. Don wears his heart on his sleeve. And I was just curious if you. I have not. I have not. You guys don't talk. No. You, you could probably invite Don on the show. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Because it's the last show of the year. Right. Well, the, the I, year's I, would. Done. I would if we had a show of tomorrow. Yes. Don, you'd be here. Yeah. But yeah. Anderson said, don't invite Don, only me. You know, the first call after I got the news about Chris Cuomo was from Andy Cohen. It was like, do you think I could get that show? I was like, Andy, you've got enough real estate in television. Yeah. You don't... It'd be good, though. <laughs> It'd be really... Yes. Oh, Andy really... believes he is fully qualified to host a presidential debate because he hosts the Housewives reunion. So, I mean... I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. I don't know. 
We have to take a quick break, but okay. please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Anderson Cooper, everybody.